Blessings, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle, and Jesus Christ is truly King of kings and Lord of lords. Now, as we continue to work our way through the book of 1 John, yesterday we spoke about those that we have welcomed into our fellowship, and yet they are wolves in sheep's clothing. And they have shown themselves to be so by the lives that they live, the way that they conduct themselves, and the lack of fruit in their lives. And so we need to be very cautious and very aware and possibly even look at everyone as suspect until they have proven to us through the faithfulness that they exhibit to us and the fruit in their lives that they are truly a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ at all costs. Now on the heels of this, we see in verse 24, we are told, let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If that you which have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And so what took place at the beginning, our initial introduction to Jesus Christ the Messiah, is very significant and very important. But then he says, this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. And what is eternal life? John 17, 3 tells us eternal life is to know God the Father and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. To know him, not to know about him, but to truly be in a relationship with him, in communication with him, in passionate love with him, devoting all our time and all of our allegiance to him. But this is where I want to spend a few moments this morning. Look at verse 26. It says, These things I've written unto you concerning them that seduce you. I am writing to you about certain individuals whose desire is to seduce you, to lure you, to entice you, to bait you, which means they clearly know what they're doing. They have an agenda, hidden as it may be. They have an agenda, and it is to seduce you. And so the question we must ask ourselves is how are they going to seduce us? Well, to the, the answer to that is found in um, 2 Peter chapter 2. And verse 3, which says, Through covetousness shall they, with feigned words, which simply means fabricated words, they will make merchandise of you. They will use you for their gain. They will manipulate you with the words that they use. They know how to tickle your fancy, how to tickle your intellect. Look at what uh, Romans chapter 16 and verse 18 says. It says, These are they who would serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but they serve their own belly, their own appetites, their own desires. And by good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. They sound like they know what they're talking about. They must know what they're talking about. That's the reasoning. That's not true, friends. That's why Paul says, I didn't come to you in word. I came to you in power. And Paul and other godly men were very careful not to fall into the trap of education and etiquette of speech and to be very articulate in the way that they said things because they knew how easy it was to manipulate the, the mind of man. And so the gospel doesn't come to you and it doesn't pierce your heart and your soul and your mind and your intellect through well-fabricated words, through fair speeches. No, it is the truth that the Almighty uses to pierce our hearts and make us see ourselves and recognize ourselves for who we truly are in desperate need of a Savior. And so he says, these things I've written unto you concerning those that would seduce you. Well, what is the best way not to be seduced? Friends, we find that in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, which says, study to show yourself approved unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, so I don't want you to be ashamed. I don't want you to be caught up. I don't want you to, to regret the fact that you were led away so easily when if you had known the truth, you could have prevented such seduction from taking place. He says, I want you to study to show yourself approved unto God. Now cut out the middle part of that. And go to the end of that, rightly dividing the word of truth. Read it again. Study to show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. Cut some more out. Study the word of truth. You see that? Study to show yourself approved unto God. Study what? The word of truth. So don't read about the Bible. Don't read what other men say about the Bible as truth. You get into the word of God and you discover the truth for yourself. 
And when you discover the truth, you're going to want to do what everyone does. You're going to want to share it with other people. But remember what Messiah said. He said, don't cast your pearl before swine. Look at the very next verse, uh, verse 16. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Heated arguments. Shun those things. If you share the truth that God has taught you with other people and it ends up in an argument, that's casting your pearl before swine, friends. But there are those out there that are seeking truth, that are looking for truth, and it is those people that you should pour yourself into. So let's stand with this right here. Look at verse 24 again. He says, Let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. In other words, what took place at the beginning is the foundation that you're to stand on. That's what Jesus meant when he said, look, when the storms of life come and they beat you down and they make you question everything that you've ever thought to be true, if you're established on the foundation, you'll stand. But if you've been established on untruth, if you've come in any other way than through the person of Jesus Christ and the work he accomplished on Calvary, you'll fall because you've built on unsolid foundation. You've built on sand. And so it's that foundation that we go back to. When the enemy whispers in our ears, you're not truly saved, you go back to the moment that you first met the Messiah, that you looked into his eyes, that you felt his grace, that you encountered his forgiveness, that your sins and the burden from your back fell away. And you knew at that moment you had been redeemed, you had been forgiven, and you were a new creation in Christ. It is that moment, friends, that you must stand upon in the trials of life. I mean, let me ask you a question. What are the two fatal blows to the human body? There's only two, and they are absolutely fatal each and every time they are struck. One would be the heart, right? And two would be the head. You take a man's head off of his shoulders, he's defenseless, he's, he's useless, he's, he's history, right? Well, now go back and look at Ephesians chapter 6. It says, take unto you the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, verse 13. Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. What evil day? The day that Jesus talked about when the storms of life come against you. The circumstances of this world beat you down. And that may come in many forms. The loss of a loved one, a sickness, unemployment, and on and on and on might the list go. But in that evil day, having done all to stand, stand. Having your loins go about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, what does the breastplate protect? It protects your upper chest. It protects your heart. And what is the breastplate of? Righteousness. And what is righteousness? It's your right standing with God, which took place on the day that you met Messiah and all your sins were forgiven. That is critical, friend. That's what John is telling us about in chapter 2 of our text today. That we are to abide what we encountered in the beginning. And that's our right standing with God, which was based upon the very fact that we confessed our sins and he forgave us. But now let's look for the head. Your feet should be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, above all, everything else, taking the shield of faith, which you're able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. So what is the helmet? It's salvation, which is exactly your forgiveness experience in Messiah. So the two things that you're to abide in, that you're to remind yourself of each and every day when you wake up, each and every night before you go to sleep, no matter what has taken place in your life, you have been forgiven. You have been chosen. Many are called. Few are chosen. You have been chosen by the Almighty himself for a higher work. The question is, have you been faithful to live it? the day that you have been given. Friends, that's what I want you to reflect on today. As you walk with Messiah, as you strive for maturity, perfection, are you doing all you can for the glory of the King and for the glory of his kingdom? Much to ponder today, friend. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until tomorrow, I will see you on the next video.